don't know, I feel like this outfit has like a real like frog and toad energy to it. I think it's these pants. They're like toad pants. Hi, I'm here to hopefully save you some time. My name is Casey and I'm a web designer and developer. I specialize in Webflow and I too have fallen a victim to the big scary CMS import that I have to re-upload like a dozen times. I've done many WordPress blog migrations. I've done Shopify product migrations. I've done just random Airtable whale sync database migration. I feel like I've seen a lot of it and I do have some tips, thoughts, tricks for approaching these kinds of migrations. So I wanted to talk through my top nine, maybe 10 tips that I uh, would recommend if you have a project like this that you're working on. Number one, this might be super obvious, but you are gonna have to use like a spreadsheet software of some kind to do the data cleanup here. I use Google Sheets, um, lots of other people use Excel. Whatever you use, you're gonna have to, you can skip this step. It's it's inevitable. Uh, find and replace is gonna be your best friend for a lot of this, this process. Number two, this also might be obvious. If you already have the collection set up in Webflow that you're going to import into, first create an item in Webflow and then export it to see the fields that you want to import. Does that make sense? I'll show it, I'll show it here. Okay, say that this is my new blog post collection type. I've got my body summary, category, all this stuff in here, and I save the collection. What I can do is I can add a bunch of sample items in here and then export this. And then inside of my spreadsheet, I'm just gonna import it in here. Okay. So now in this new spreadsheet, I know exactly what fields it's going to accept in here. Number three, image tips. I, images were kind of confusing to me before I did like an image migration for the first time. When you are uploading the images into Webflow, Webflow is basically accepting a URL of an image on a website and importing that into the Webflow CMS. So it is kind of copying that image into the CMS. You're gonna wanna make sure that URL is formatted correctly in the CSV. Importing a multi-image field will work, but they have to be full URLs separated by a semicolon. So when you're doing your data cleanup, make sure that the URLs are complete and they're all separated by semicolons. I have run into this in the past where the URLs aren't quite working. So you have to go back, you have to make sure all the URLs are correct and they link to something, otherwise they won't upload. Also, as you're bringing in images, Webflow is pretty good about catching most of them, but if the image is too big or the URL is like too long, sometimes it won't bring over. So there is just gonna be a manual have to look through the images in here to make sure that it's catching everything. If you're planning on optimizing your images before you bring them into Webflow, I'd probably do it at this step. Webflow just introduced a new feature where you can convert to WebP within the CMS. Uh, and that's great, but I would always recommend that you try to do that optimization outside of Webflow first, um, just so that you kind of know what the image looks like. Cause you know, when you upload within Webflow, you can't always guarantee that the quality is, is going to be top notch or up to standard. Um, cause it's doing like a bulk uh, application of all the images. So just keep that in mind. Number four, rich text. So rich text, this is things like blog body fields, things like that. Webflow is gonna convert that HTML to its own rich text field. And most of the stuff comes over normal, but there is always inevitably stuff that uh, gets skipped and is super weird and random. This usually happens with WordPress blog imports. Sometimes people will have uh, like plugins that they had on the WordPress side that add in little snippets of code that do not translate to Webflow at all. In that case, I would comb through the data in your spreadsheet and see what those might be. Um, I'll give you an example here of one that was on a client project of mine. You'll just wanna find and replace those and remove it or see what it is on the client facing site before so you're not missing anything. It might just be an image uh, block that you can replace in there. But that's sort of the main thing I find with bringing over WordPress blog imports is like those rich text fields, just random snippets of of plugin code and things like that are not relevant to Webflow. And so they'll still look like, like code within a blog post, which does not look nice. So take that. 
Another thing to look out for are things like tables, charts, code, excerpts. You'll just want to make sure that those come over correctly too, because they do have equivalents on the rich text field, I think, but they might be formatted slightly differently. So just keep an eye out for that. Internal links. Uh, make sure these still exist on the site. This might be an obvious thing, but like any link that is referenced within your rich text, like your blog posts, just make sure that it is being brought over to, or that it is being redirected. I've run into a lot of uh, just issues like that where there is a page that's being referenced in the blog post and then it doesn't exist on the new site or the URL is going to change a little bit. One nuance here is I know a lot of blogs will reference like internal PDFs they have on the site while Webflow will bring in the image links, like it'll bring in the images for a rich text field. It won't bring in those PDFs. They'll still link to the old site. Um, so PDFs are, are kind of tough um, and I'll address a workflow to, to address that here in a little bit. Reference fields, we're talking things like blog categories, blog tags. Uh, product categories, things like that, you're always going to want to upload that CMS collection first. And then the reference field is the slugs, the URLs separated by a semicolon. By the way, all of this is available on the Webflow University like, uh, like table that shows you what fields can import and which ones can't. But yeah, just best practice to do that first and make sure that table is done so that everything references in your big, big table. Okay, got 3% battery. Number seven, seven. Number fields uh, are not always working like number fields. What I mean by that is if your number field has like a dollar sign or a USD text over it, or even a comma, it's not gonna import. Webflow number field only accepts numbers. Um, save yourself the pain. Number eight. The file field. We love the file field, but you can't import stuff into the file field. It is so frustrating. I'm so sorry. But how do I, if PDFs are linked, how do I do that? I would probably find a way to do it manually. If you have PDFs linked in your rich text or blog, I would take those PDFs, upload them to Webflow, grab the link, and then find and replace in your CSV anywhere that that PDF is mentioned. Um, I've done this once, it worked. If somebody else has a better way of addressing PDFs, let me know, because I still don't have like a premium way to, to address that issue yet. So let me know, because that is, that is a tough one. Number nine is publish dates. So when you're exporting a blog, it usually comes with a publish date, especially from WordPress. Webflow doesn't allow you to map that to the like native Webflow publish date field. You're going to have to add a separate publish date field in your CMS collection if you want to map that over. I know that's annoying, but uh, it's the way it is and they haven't changed it yet. They might change that in the future. I don't know, but that is the way it is. I feel like there should be a 10th. Number 10 is don't freak out. It's going to be okay. You can do this. Um, and you're a data wizard. If you have any tips, please leave them in the comments for other people who are importing hundreds to thousands of CMS items and are stressed about it. Yeah, that's all I got. I'll see you next time here from the, the cloth.